Hello everyone, welcome to Jamaica 411. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are my regular subscribers and viewers, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. Well, the only thing I can say is that this matter of the flight coming from Dubai, which landed last week Thursday, is a mystery of no mean order. Mystery because of the inadequacy of information coming from the Ministry of National Security, which makes me wonder if there is more to this story than they wish to say. Was there really a security threat? If there is a security threat, was it a threat to Jamaica or was it a threat to some other country? But the sparseliness of information coming from the Ministry of National Security is a little curious to me. And I suspect that there is more to this drama than we know. But the Ministry may feel it necessary not to expound. The government usually behaves that way if they don't want to cause a panic or perhaps they don't have enough information to give us. What we're going to do is to our usual investigations. And uh, in our investigations, it's going to take us deep into what occurred at the Norman Malley International Airport last week, Thursday. We are going to be looking into the matter and we are going to begin as usual with facts and from the facts we see what conclusion we may draw and whether or not the conclusion is as some people may think it is. You would have heard many persons speculating as to whether or not the flight is illegal. There was a uh, rumor that the flight did not have the proper documentation. That the aircraft suddenly appeared into our airspace and requested landing. You would have heard that. You would have heard that the Indians who were aboard were not equipped with proper documentation to be landed. So we've been hearing many things. We've also been hearing that the Indians had one-way tickets and uh, that they were housed at a hotel in downtown Kingston from which they were roaming about in the um, downtown Kingston shopping. We would have heard that the Indians were not allowed landing rights. The immigration decided not to allow them to land but to stay at the hotel they had booked. And you have heard many, many speculations as to what this means, including that it may be human trafficking that's involved. You have heard many things. Some of us, you know, are very cynical because we know how corruption is in this country. Speculate that somebody may be involved in the illegal entry of this flight of Indians and be that as it may we do know certain things and there are certain things that we found out and there are certain things we do not know in order to determine whether or not this flight was illegal it is the Civil Aviation Authority who we must get that information from and the Ministry of National Security reported yesterday that the flight was not illegal. They sought to clarify the issues that the flight had, that it had something to do with a documentation that was not submitted. And we'll get into that. What documents are required for an aircraft to land in Jamaica? And that could be any number of nine documents. You're required to have a certificate of airworthiness, certificate of insurance, 
Certificate of Registration of the Aircraft, Aircraft and Route Authorization Sections of the Operation Specification, a radio station license, noise certificate, any one of these documents could have been the document that was left out of the application, which is the reason why there was a delay, or at any rate, issues with the landing permit of this aircraft. But we have no idea of which one it was. And the Ministry of National Security did not seek to tell us, at least not yet. Where were these Indians going? Was Jamaica their final destination or somewhere else? Where did these Indian nationals board the flight? Up till now, we have not heard where the flight originated from. All the stories began with Dubai, but the flight had gone into Dubai, then to Egypt, and apparently a non-stop flight to Jamaica. The authorities to date have not told us where the flight originated from and uh, that they must know and if they're not telling us there must be a reason furthermore as you can see from the chart the distance from Dubai to Kingston Jamaica is 8,055 miles 8,055 miles that is the distance and the flight hours the amount of time it would take for a flight to, to, to travel from Dubai to Jamaica will be 21 hours and 45 minutes. That's a non-stop flight. No airline is allowed to stay in the air that long. After 13 hours, it has to land. The pilots and the crew, they are allowed a rest period of 10 consecutive hours prior to taking the assignment. So this flight did not travel from Dubai directly to Kingston, Jamaica, unless, unless they had two crews aboard. In other words, you had one crew that was flying, one resting, and then after the 10 hours, another crew would take over, all in flight. But here's the thing. Long Ridge Commercial Airlines, as far as I understand it, can only travel 13 hours before they require refueling so there's no way this flight could have made it from dubai to jamaica non-stop it had to stop somewhere else and even if it had traveled to cairo it would still have to stop again to refuel where did this flight stop to refuel and did they pick up any more passengers this information is also not forthcoming from the government we need some more information if they are able to give us this information because there's a possibility that the security threat that they were referring to it is not a threat to Jamaica it may have been a threat to somebody else where were these men going to where were these Indians going to let me rephrase that for now so the mystery surrounding USC Aeroflight number XG201 Deepens. You know, my friends, I have me more than a little suspicion, you know, that we may well be on to something. What do you think? Let's get down to the meat of the matter. So, what are the facts we have at our disposal so far? The first fact is that we have a flight of 200 plus Indians, a German crew and one Frenchman. This is a flight that is chartered. A chartered flight, German crew, Indian passengers, one Frenchman. This flight originated from a place we know not where. That's fact two. Fact three, the flight at some point landed in Dubai. What it did in Dubai, we have not been told. Whether they picked up passengers or they picked up cargo or both. That we don't know. That's number three. Next fact is that the aircraft also landed in Cairo. 
Egypt. And we were told that one passenger was picked up. I do believe it was a Frenchman. Well, we're going to put that as a uh, maybe for now. The next thing we hear about this flight, it was seeking permission to land at the Norman Mann International Airport. The ministry told us it was not an illegal flight. They knew the plane was coming. Permission was sought. Permission was granted. If the permission was not granted, that plane could not take off into the air. So we know the permission was granted. Somehow or another, the plane was told that the documentation was not complete. What the plane was doing while they were discussing this, we don't know. We don't know if it was on the tarmac at the airport. We don't know if it was in the air, meaning that they did not allow it to land until they get the, the documentation. Those, these are the facts that we know so far. Another fact that we know is that the Indians were refused entry. We also know, as a matter of fact, that two of the passengers on that airline were not listed on the airline's passenger manifest. The other passengers were named, not them. We know as a matter of fact that when our immigration officers caught these persons, these two men, they conducted what they called an enhanced check or enhanced checks into their backgrounds. And we also know that at the conclusion of the checks, they became concerned. They said they had um, security concerns about this particular flight and the passengers coming from we know not where. And so they were not allowed entry. Those are the facts. We know as a matter of fact that when the passengers were refused entry, they were escorted to a hotel in downtown Kingston. And we were told that this hotel was pre-booked. So they had booked the hotel before they left from wherever it was that they embarked on the aircraft that landed at the airport. So it was pre-booked. Finally, we know it is as a fact that these persons who were supposed to have been under guard at the hotel in downtown Kingston were allowed to roam about in downtown Kingston shopping. And this is very significant and you will hear why it is very significant shortly. And I want you to pay very close attention to that fact. The fact that these passengers who were not allowed entry into Jamaica and who were supposed to be on the police guard were allowed to roam about and shop in the downtown Kingston area. Remember now, take a note of that because we have some very important observation to make regarding that which will give us some clues as to what is going on. So now we come to the report that was made in the Gleaner. The Gleaner, based on their sources, they tell us they have made some discoveries for us which may help us in our understanding of what may be going on so that we may get to the bottom of this mysterious case of this German flight which entered into our airspace and landed at the Norman Manley on Thursday last. So let us repair to the Gleaner now and let them tell us what they have found out through their linky linky in immigration. So the news is entitled Indians awaiting flight clearance to depart Jamaica. And the Gleaner report began by saying Scores of Indians who arrived in Jamaica on Thursday, which was May 2, 2024, without proper documentation, are currently in the departure lounge of the Norman Mall International Airport in Kingston, awaiting flight clearance to leave. 
This after the group of 220 Indians, German crew members, and at least one French citizen landed in Jamaica on chartered flight XG201 from Cairo International Airport in Egypt. The flight transited through Dubai. So you see, it transited through Dubai. It did not originate there. All right, so we've established that. At least this is what the Gleaner is telling us. The Gleaner went on to say the USC GmbH carrier in which they arrive is registered in Germany and operated by USC Aero, a company founded in 2020 by airline professionals. So some airline people in the airline business got together, probably the pilots, stewardesses, engineers, you know, got together and decided they to start their own airline. So they've given us the background as to this airline that the chartered flight came from. The Gleaner go on to say, sources who spoke with the Gleaner on Saturday confirmed that the majority of Indians were headed to Nicaragua while some were destined for Canada. So the Indians were not intending to stay here in Jamaica. They were en route, majority of them to Nicaragua, which is in Central America, and uh, the remainder intended, they said, to go to Canada. Now I'm going to repair shortly to Loop News, who may have a little bit more information regarding their travel plans so that you can see um, so that we can get some more clues as to what is going on. So our first question, where were they heading, has been answered by the Gleaner, Nicaragua and Canada. I want you to take, pay close attention to that, you know. I want you to take note because we're going to come back to this. We have some very important observations to make about this travel plan of these Indians. According to the Gleaner, they were told that the group was scheduled to arrive and stay in the island for five days before departing for the intended destinations. So they were going to stay here for five days and then they would make their way to Nicaragua and those who were going to Canada would make their way to Canada. It says here, they were housed at the Rock Hotel in downtown Kingston at their expense, but under the supervision of immigration officers and the police. Gleaner sources say the Indians were allowed to leave the hotel daily. You hear that? Okay, stick up in right there, you know, because we're coming back to this. So when asked, how come you're allowing them to leave daily? The source said, according to the Gleaner, we didn't consider them high risk. I wanted to pay close attention to these language they're using, you know. According to the Gleaner, they spoke to someone who told them that the Indians were not considered high risk. Now, who could have been provided them with this information? Immigration? Or was it the police? But whoever it was, they had the authority, obviously, to give permission for the Indians to leave the hotel's precinct or the hotel area and stroll around wherever they want in downtown Kingston. I suppose they could have gone anywhere and probably did. But that's what they said happened. At the time, the Gleaner said it wasn't clear whether all of the passengers were at the airport awaiting the flight to depart. And they said more to come, which would suggest that they have other information, but they're waiting to confirm it. All right, so let's go now over to Loop News and see what information they have for us. Some 10 hours ago, Loop News reported that the Indians who arrived on charter flight depart Jamaica. Ten hours ago, they reported that. Not only did they report it, but they also recorded the Indians leaving. Here is the aircraft, the charter aircraft, leaving 
the runway at the Norman Mile International Airport, headed for parts unknown. So, Loop News is reporting that the flight left Jamaica. It says here, charter flight USC GMBH with 253 people aboard, majority of them Indians, has left Jamaica. So, 253 arrived, and Loop News is telling us that 253 people left. So, the question of whether there were any of the Indian nationals left behind, the answer here appears to be no. So they gave a little background as to the controversy concerning the arrival of this flight. And they went on to say all 253 passengers and crew are accounted for, according to Minister of Transport, Daryl Vaz. And they boarded the flight leaving Jamaica at approximately 11.46 a.m. from the Norman Man International Airport in Kingston. You see, we're getting some specifics and we're getting some timeline here. Loop News went on to say the minister in a post on X, formerly Twitter, said the charter company and the passengers covered all costs associated with their departure from Jamaica. Loop News continues to say that concerns were raised about the passengers being allowed to leave the airport amid initial security concerns. On Monday, the Ministry of National Security said the flight arrived in Jamaica legally on May 2, 2024, having received the requisite approvals for operation from the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority. So the airline, again, Loop News is reiterating that the airline and the charter flight had approval to operate within Jamaica's airspace and to land. I'm going to read this section because I find that Loop News has given the, the clearest clarity, if there's such a thing, as to the situation. So Loop News is saying here, despite having arrangements in place for accommodation and departure from the country, the passengers were refused entry by immigration officials based on security concerns uncovered during their processing at the airport, the ministry said. So this is the first time now we are hearing that the passengers had arrangements for departure. Remember, we were only told by the Gleaner when they were reporting from what the ministry said that they had only, or they seem only to have had arrangements in place for accommodation. We were wondering what about departure how were they going to leave since they know that they were going to nicaragua and canada were there any such arrangements in place yes so we may now say that these passengers were um en route not only en route but jamaica was a transit except that they are staying for five days before the transit to wherever they they said they were going each of the passengers and we now know that they were going to Nicaragua and uh, to Canada. That's what the Gleaner said. So they did have arrangements in place for accommodation. So they book their flight on this charter plane. They book the accommodation to stay in Jamaica. They also book their departure from the island. And we don't know by what means they intended to leave the island, but we know that they intended to leave and it was never their intention to remain here. So, let us continue. Based on the security concerns, right? So, Luke New said, it said to, which is the uh, Ministry of National Security, that while passenger flights are routinely screened by local authorities for security threats, possible breaches of law and or regulations. So they are saying at the Ministry of National Security, this is not unusual. We shouldn't read too much into it. The fact that they were being screened and they have been declared or believed or um, suspected of posing some kind of security threat or at any rate 
immigration authorities had some security concerns about the passengers of this flight. In the instance of the charter flight US C GmbH flight, a German registered aircraft, while the ministry was alerted to the operation of the flight based on what appeared to be anomalies and missing details from its initial permit application, it said the necessary supporting documents were later supplied to satisfy the requirements for obtaining a permit to operate in Jamaica. So just as we said before, there was something missing and there are about nine or ten different, um, <laughs> there are nine or ten other documentation that needed to have accompanied or being at next to the application and uh, one of them was missing and they were able to get it from the charter company, I suppose, perhaps the, the company which owns the aircraft. They go on to say, Notwithstanding, the ministry continued to consult with law enforcement while the flight received clearance to operate, and the immigration authorities undertook pre-screening activities as per standard operating procedures, the ministry said on Monday. According to the Ministry of National Security, upon the charter flight landing in Jamaica, it was discovered that there were two passengers on the flight that did not appear on the submitted passenger manifest. This led to the further investigation by PICA and based on those enhanced checks, see, the words are used again, the decision was taken by PICA not to grant the passengers leave to land in Jamaica. All right, now we've been, we learned that, but what we learned from our time spent with loop news one is that there were previous arrangements for the passengers to leave jamaica and two that they have indeed left jamaica and all 253 passengers and crews or crew members were accounted for and they have now left so whatever security concerns we have it's now over we have gathered together all the material we need, seems to me. And now it's time to look for clues. And these clues, we hope, will point us in the direction we need to go to unravel the mystery behind this flight. No, I think the best way to go is to look at the Ministry of National Security. Not so much in terms of what it said, but in terms of what it did not say. The, what seems to be the hush-hush surrounding information about this flight. For example, number one, the ministry's hush-hush about the origin of the flight. To date, we have not heard what the origin of this flight is and even as the flight departs we have not heard where the flight is going back to so clearly the intention is to keep this origin a secret for some particular reason and we will get into that shortly not even the media houses links that they have in immigration all about the place national security not even them have been able to find out where this aircraft originated from did it in fact originate in dubai maybe so but that's not what they said they said it transited through dubai coming from somewhere else the second thing is that there is a deafening silence about the timeline concerning the flight plan of this chartered flight. For instance, when did it leave Dubai? After it arrived in Dubai, when did it leave for Cairo? That we don't know. We don't know when it leave Cairo and headed to Jamaica. 
We don't know that either. You see, there are so much pieces of information that's available to the ministry that they could share with us, but they have chosen not to share. And uh, we're going to look at that shortly. So the flight stopped in Cairo, Egypt, and picked up one passenger. That information, we were told. Not quite sure right now what the source is, but that's part of the information that we were told. But when it comes to where the flight went after that, the ministry is mum. The flight between Cairo and Jamaica. Cairo is 6,611 miles from Jamaica. And that would be around a 16-hour flight. And we already established that after 13 hours, those aircraft, these long-range aircraft, they have to refuel. So where did the aircraft refuel? It had to stop somewhere to refuel. And the ministry is silent about that as well. Where did it refuel and why the secrecy? Now, the fourth point is that the flight has departed. Where has it gone? Silence. What did they do with those two illegal immigrants? Because if they were on this flight, not on the manifest, all right? Let us not assume they were illegal. What if there was a mistake and somehow they were left off? Well, something seemed to have happened because our immigration decided that the whole entire plane load of people were not going to be landed because they had what they called security concerns. I want you to remember that term and I'm writing it down. Security concerns. Good. Now that we've dealt with the Ministry of National Security, let us now look at the Civil Aviation Authority as well as the Immigration Service, PICA. Because, you see, when I said to you that the information from the Ministry of National Security is sparse, you now know what I'm talking about. You see how much information there is for them to provide us with especially with the concern that the citizens have about this flight and by the information that we got from the ministry so far it appears as though there may be a fair amount of misinformation concerning this flight and they seem not to be very anxious to clear it up rather strange isn't it but when it comes to the immigration service their actions, I would think, are rather odd, quite contradictory, if you ask me. First of all, they claim that, first of all, they claim that the plane that was arriving did not have its documentation complete. With what I'm thinking, that may be going on, I now wonder if that was true or that was an Olo that sold the plane for some particular reason. But let us assume that the documentation was not in order. That's what they said. We're going to take their word for it. The next thing, when the flight arrived, they claimed that there were two persons who were not on the manifest they came became suspicious and investigated and end of it all they decided to declare that they are concerned about the security um, about these persons they're concerned about the security so they decided to not allow not even one of them to land not the two that they're suspicious of you know none of them to land all right because of security concern. Pay attention now. The question I want to ask you is this. If they were so concerned about the security surrounding these Indian nationals, and by the way, they are Indian nationals, 
They are not Indians, as we colloquially call them. They are Indian nationals. They have a passport that says they are from India, the country India. All right? Not from Pakistan, not from Bangladesh, nor any of what we generally call Indian countries. No, they are Indian. If they were so concerned about the security surrounding these Indians, why did they allow them to leave the airport? Okay, so they gave us an explanation. It was not human to keep them there. They needed to use a bathroom. They needed to sleep properly. And with the flight, the flight crew having to rest for 24 hours, perhaps between 10 and 24 hours, it would not be nice to have them in the airport. And since they already booked the hotel in downtown Kingston, let them go and go stay there. No issue. We just have some security around them. All right, we can accept that. But one would expect that if you were concerned about the security, that you deny them entry, that you would have had tight security around these people. Instead, not only did you not have tight security around them, you gave them permission to walk about, leave the hotel and walk about Kingston. Now remember, my friends, that they do not have uh, an entry. They were denied entry into Jamaica. So the minute that they step outside of that hotel onto King Street or onto Ocean Boulevard or onto Church Street, they were illegal. Police could have grabbed them and locked them up. But the police would not have done so because somebody gave permission. So when the, when the police and the immigration escorted them to the hotel, they know what the rules are. These persons must be kept under lock and key. All the entrances must be manned and they are not allowed to go out. But somebody called somebody who is in authority and control over the security apparatus and told them to allow these people to go out and shop if that is what they want to do. And when the Gleaner asked them, but, but how come? They said, oh, we don't consider them high risk. No, even if they were low risk security threat. Because remember, you deny them entry, you know, on the basis that you are concerned about the risk, security risk that they may pose. Even if they were low security risk, how is it, if you really believe that, that you allow low security risk people to walk out into the street and mingle with Jamaican people. You don't find that very strange. I do. And let me tell you what I think is going on. The actions of the Pika does not suggest, because they would have to be grossly, we have to believe that they are grossly irresponsible to allow low risk People, people that know nothing about, consider low risk to walk out into King Street and to Orange Street to mingle among the Jamaican people. These are people that they have a concern about, that they were not going to allow it into Jamaica. Hmm? They would have to be grossly responsible. But we don't believe that they are grossly irresponsible. We think that they are very responsible people. Therefore, the reason that they gave for refusing entry to these Indians cannot be the truth. And when I say cannot be the truth, I mean that it cannot be the truth that they think that these Indians pose any risk to our security. And we know that because of their actions and they are responsible people. So therefore, why did they not allow these Indians entry? I am going to say to you now that I suspect that they did not allow entry because it was somebody else somewhere in the world that told them not to allow these Indians entry. Because they may be a threat to somebody else's security, not ours. So because our immigration understand the ropes and know what are gone, the two men who they held may have been of security, of security concern 
to somebody else and they decide to all right we don't know what is going on if it's a chartered flight chances are these people know them one another how did the cons are playing going travel from dubai to cairo to pick up one smuddy and then head to jamaica and then various places where they must have stopped to refuel all of that things might have been happening there they may have been under surveillance and when they arrived in Jamaica, the cover was broken. Bust the cover. Something is going on. And because it is so hush hush, chances are that it is hush hush because there is an ongoing investigation, perhaps concerning these persons or some number of them on board that flight. And so the information about where the flight went, where it is coming from, and where it is now going is hush-hush because perhaps somebody is watching that flight or somebody or two aboard that flight. And that was why I said earlier that when the flight was told that there was something the matter with the permit, that may not have been true. That may have been a ruse to buy some time in order to make some preparations or another. I won't go any further into it in terms of what I think could be going on, but this is why I said this thing is rather strange. But if you think this is strange, let us now examine the actions of the passengers. Now that is stranger than strange. Now, when it comes to commercial flights, it is somebody else who determines where the aircraft departs from and what is the aircraft's destination. You would just have to live with that. If for argument's sake, there is a commercial flight coming from Dubai and uh, it terminates in Jamaica. This is the final destination. But you want to get to Nicaragua. It means you'll have to take that flight to Jamaica. If that is the cheapest and fastest way to get to Nicaragua, wait in Jamaica five days possibly for a connecting flight. And then you take your flight and head to Nicaragua. If you're on your way to Canada, and this is the cheapest and fastest route from Dubai. You take the plane from Dubai to Jamaica, wait your five days for the connecting flight, and you head to Canada. You just have to live with that because that is a commercial flight. However, this flight that came in on Thursday was not a commercial flight. It was, in fact, a chartered flight. And uh, when you have a chartered flight, the dynamics is totally different. You determine where the destination of that charter flight will be. So, when these Indians and the Frenchmen chartered this flight, they said to the immigration in Jamaica that their final destination was Nicaragua, and Canada. So why then did they charter a flight and have that flight terminated in Jamaica? Why would they do that? Why not charter the flight to take you where you want to go, which is Nicaragua and to Canada? So it's no small surprise that our immigration here were suspicious of these passengers. And then when they found that there were two of them on the flight that were not, not documented in the manifest, that would even make them more suspicious. Now the immigration said that they conducted what they called enhanced checks. Enhanced checks, which means that it wasn't just an ordinary background check. It was a deep background check. They would have wanted to know if these men are engaged in any criminal activities, any terrorism, if they are on the red flag list, or if 
some government want them for any reason. To get that information, they would have had to consult with our local Interpol because these persons were coming from abroad. This now is how they would have been advised by one of those law enforcement agencies not to allow entry of these passengers. Now, when we consider the way in which our immigration acted here in terms of allowing these passengers to roam around Kingston, it seems to me, as I said before, that the security concern was not ours. The security concern must have been somebody else. But there can be no doubt that the actions of these passengers to charter a flight, not to take them to their destination, would suggest that they're up to something. Now, what could that be? I think it's fairly obvious that these Indians and a Frenchman were people who had access to money. I mean, they were able to charter the flight, to book five days of hotel stay in Jamaica, to arrange either a connecting flight or go by boat or ship to Nicaragua. They will be taking a flight to Canada. So they are clearly people with money. Or at any rate, certainly people who have sponsors or access to money. But their behavior is rather strange. You charter a flight and you do not take that flight to the destination. There must be a reason for it. Now, why would Indians pick up themselves and take this very long trip, spend all this money to go to Nicaragua? What is happening in Nicaragua? And why would they spend so much money to take this circuitous route to get to Canada? Is it possible that neither Nicaragua nor Canada is their final destination? Is it possible that where they really intend to go is the United States of America? In which case, they may not be moneyed people at all, but people who are sponsored for some particular reason. Now, those who went or were seeking to enter through Nicaragua may have been trying to get through the United States through the border with Mexico, while those who are going to Canada may have been trying to get to the United States through the Canadian border. Because, you see, there is nothing that they have done that makes sense. If these, if their intention was legitimate and they chartered a flight, why did they not take that flight to their destination in Nicaragua and in Canada? Why did they stop here and then plan an alternative transit into these countries if they were up to any good? If these were rich Indians, they should have had no problem at all getting to Nicaragua nor into Canada, especially with Canada and their very generous immigration rules, um, you know, encouraging people to come there to invest. So again, I ask, why did they not take that charter flight into Canada? And finally, the question that I would like to ask is about the passengers themselves. Were there any women aboard the flight? Were there any women and children among the passengers or were they only men? Now, this would be a very interesting piece of information. Don't you agree? Well, you've heard my theory, my summation, my evidence and my arguments. Now I want to hear what you think. What are your own suspicions, if any? 
So what do you think? You think these passengers may have been up to something or they are just some legitimate businessmen trying to go about their business? What do you think? I mean, if more information were to come to refute all these suspicions that I've laid before you, then, of course, I'll have no problem revising my outlook and take back all of what I said before. But I have a suspicion that we over here may be onto something. And it's all because of what the Ministry of National Security did not say throughout this whole ordeal. Not to mention the peculiarity of the passengers who chartered a flight not to take them to where they say they want to go. Very odd indeed. Anyway, I am going to leave you now. I thank you so much for keeping me company, listening to me as you always do, and also for liking and sharing and, you know, do the ropes. I also treasure your comments. If you agree with me, you disagree with me, or you have your own theories, me want to hear it. Me want to hear it, you know. I mean, I come out here for chat to myself. So please talk to me in the comment section. So until next time, walk good.